Hello, my siblings in Christ. Today is July 23rd, and tomorrow, God forbid, one of the most majestic jewels of Christendom will become again a mosque. I'm talking about Hagia Sophia, the Church of the Holy Wisdom, once the Cathedral Church of the Patriarch of Constantinople. Some history. Built by St. Justinian I in the 6th century in place of a church that bore the same name, it was the biggest Christian church at the time, the building with the largest interior at the time, and an architectural wonder, the first of its kind to use pendative domes. It is upon this very church that the majority of mosques today are based upon. When Constantinople fell in 1453, clergy and worshippers caught in the church were either killed or enslaved. In 1935, when Mustafa Kemal Atatürk became the first Turkish president, he initiated a grand campaign of Turkish secularization, during which the mosque of Hagia Sophia was made a museum. Now, the current Sultan of Turkey, Erdogan, wants Hagia Sophia to become a mosque again. These are some of my scattered thoughts. First, we need to know that God allows shattering news such as these as a reminder of our own sins, especially in the light of current schisms in the Orthodox world. Second, think of the early Christians, how difficult the persecutions of Jerusalem were for them. But persecution of Christians is like stomping a dandelion. It will destroy the flower, but many other dandelions will spring all around. If the Christians of Jerusalem were not persecuted, Christianity would not have spread as fast or as far. Third, there is no consecration or dedication or desecration that would remove God's blessing from Hagia Sophia. Once that terrible and awesome and majestic name was pronounced over the grounds, that of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, that place was forever consecrated in the glory and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. No amount of strange and foreign prayers will ever change that. I once asked my spiritual father if he would use in the Divine Liturgy a chalice that was desecrated and used in a black mass. Of course, he said, I would bless it again and reuse it. I would give no quarter to Satan. Fourth, the status of Hagia Sophia as a museum is sorrowful, but not as sorrowful as it being a mosque, where the divinity of our God, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is trampled upon whenever Allah hath no son is uttered in that very place where this divinity is supposed to be proclaimed. Fifth, I was never an optimist in Christians uniting on dogmatic grounds, but this shows that us Christians can unite against a common evil. It also proves that it may avail nothing, and that we should not trust in the princes of men and princes of UNESCO, with their declarations full of words such as sad, regrettable and lack of dialogue. We fight not with the weapons of this world, it is our time to take up our prayer ropes, our rosaries, our uh, protestant prayer ropes, to fold our hands in prayer, or to lift them up to our Lord and God. 6. For the love of political gain, Erdogan is playing with the living fire that is the Holy Spirit. As he panders to religious extremists of his own country, he is cutting the branch upon which he is sitting. He who granted him the power might as well take it and take it quite painfully. Who knows, if Mehmed the Conqueror spared the cathedral, perhaps his empire would be permitted to last until this day. If you have been to Istanbul, you'd know that the colossal blue mosque is walking distance away from Hagia Sophia. Muslims have plenty of worship space in Turkey, and this move is nothing more than spitting in the face of Christianity. 7. St. John Chrysostom preached in one of the churches that stood before the current church of Hagia Sophia. He used to criticize the Empress with these words. Again Herodias rages, and asks for the head of John on a platter. Again the Sultan of old rages, and he asks the head of Sophia on a platter. How ironic. Eighth, I know that many of you will say, it's just a church. God does not abide in earthly temples. Church is an assembly of the faithful, not the building and all that. That is all very true. Our God is not a pagan deity who is bound by his or her domain, or a mountain, or sea, or his or her temple. However, thanks to this it's just a building, 
the envoys of St. Vladimir were convinced of the truth of Christianity. The beauty of the temple laid bare to them the truth that is behind the beauty. It was St. Vladimir who Christianized the Kievan Rus. Thanks to this, it's just a building, one of the major world powers, Russia, is Christian today. You may dislike Russia politically all you want, and they couldn't fault you for that. But spiritually, Russia is a major force for good, and all that because of this building. I would even go as far as to say that sadly, Russia is currently the sole Christian major world power. And finally, you may think that the last liturgy was interrupted during the siege of Constantinople. First of all, a liturgy can never be interrupted. It means that it still lasts. Second of all, I know for a fact that at least one Serbian bishop served a divine liturgy in Hagia Sophia. He wore his amophorian under his cassock. He was surrounded by seminarians. They performed a very abridged version of the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom and then partook of the Holy Communion, having smuggled in bread and wine in their knapsacks. Now, I'm not saying that people should do this, but they totally should. So there you have it. This is a sad affair, but one in which we can find further cause for holiness. And let us remember the prophecy of St. Paisios, who said that Hagia Sophia will be Orthodox again and the minarets of the cathedral will become the pillars for stylites, or pillar-dwelling ascetics, whose prayer robes shall reach the bottom of the former minarets. Amen. Lord, grant us this.